What is going on, everybody? We're live on this beautiful Thursday. It's actually nice up here in Minnesota. It's uh, like almost 50, or maybe it is 50. Um, I know there's tornado sirens going off in southern Minnesota, and we're supposed to get 12 to 14 inches of snow up here. So it's quite uh, quite the system we got coming through. But it's warm today, so... Hopefully everybody's having a great day. I know I was just talking to my mom. It's 70 degrees back in Michigan, so it's always a good thing. Um, today's going to be a little different. Uh, we're on session nine. Um, we'll talk about how live geese communicate with each other. So that's going to transform into how you call when you're hunting. Because when you're hunting, you're trying to be a goose. You're trying to sound like a live goose. So... Uh, I'm going to show some videos, a little bit of footage I've got over the years, and I got some of it last week just watching some birds. It's going to be very hard for me to teach you how to read birds and how to call at birds. It's going to take time on your part. <clears throat> You're going to have to hunt. You're going to have to learn um, from getting your butts kicked. Um, like I've said it before, you got to eat shit for many years before you can rise to the top. And I ate sh shit for a lot of years. And, man, there was times where I was excited if we killed one goose. Um, because you just don't start off awesome and a great caller. Good afternoon, Richard. And killing stuff all the time. It takes time. It takes dedication. It takes work. It takes practice. And the more you're in the field... The more you learn, it's going to make you a better caller and hunter in the field. So we're going to talk a little bit about um, reading the birds, how to read them. So first, let's just, I'm going to pull, I'm just going to pull some footage here and I'll turn the phone over so you can see. And then I'm going to let you guys kind of figure out kind of what I'm getting at here. Okay, so this first one is, I'm just filming a bunch of geese in the field last winter, and there's probably 300 honkers in this field, and there's four geese coming. I saw them from a long ways away. I'm like, all right, I'm going to record what the geese on the ground do when these geese come. So this is what I, this is what I found. The footage won't be perfect. It's on my, uh, you'll get the point, though. I'm not uh, making a. TV show here. I'm just trying to help you guys. And... You can see the geese on the ground. What are they doing? Not a damn thing, right? They're not, I mean, they're not making any noise, nothing. The geese that were in the air, that's where your noise is coming from. So, Oh, I already flew over at that point. I was a little late on that, but so uh, those geese in the air, that's where the noise is coming from. Not those on the ground. That bird there is just chilling, feeding. These are feeding. You got one sentry there, a couple walking around. To be honest with you, they don't really give a shit about the birds flying over. Now, if, you know, if they were to, if those birds in the field were to start making noise and clucking and quarreling with each other on the ground, would those birds flying maybe want to come in or maybe cup their wings up? I don't know, maybe, because that's what we are trying to duplicate and try to get birds to do when we're hunting. So a lot of times, when especially when everything's right, and you're calling, making some noise. If them birds don't want to be there, they're not coming in there. They're just going to keep going. And evidently, those birds didn't want to be there. The birds on the ground didn't care very much. They were not aggressive toward them. They weren't making any noise. So that's just uh, the, the more I've hunted geese and filmed geese, um, the more I've seen how 
guys over call. Um, and even in my hunts, uh, with my buddies or anything, I've had to tell them, listen, dude, you know, quit calling so much. Um, if you're on the X and you're in the spot where those birds have been feeding every day, all you're doing is screwing them up at that point because they're coming, man. They're coming to that spot every day. So if you're in there as a hunter blowing a bunch of notes, sound like an idiot, not live geese, you're going to push them out of there. And that's what a lot of guys do is they blow the geese out of the hole. When there's a certain yardage, and I'm going to give you guys some sequences and examples here in a minute, but there's a certain yardage point where you can get away with some stuff. And then there's a point where it's like, all right, this is... This is the break, make or break point where they're at that 60 yard mark. So here's another. <laughs> Same thing. Those birds just landed there. Here comes a pair or a single landing. Per. And here comes this group. Look at the birds on shore and on land. They don't care. They're not honking, making noise, freaking out. I mean, the birds that are making all the noise are these ones right here that just landed. Those are the birds that are making the noise and being vocal. So, and you wonder why you blow geese out. Well, because a lot of times in a live situation like this, the the geese um they're not honking they're not calling at the ones in the air they're not saying hey come over here or hey f off don't come to my corn it's the noises you hear are from the geese on the ground quarreling back and forth that's what you hear so when you hear the double clucks and aggressive stuff it's between groups of geese that are already on the ground going at it it's not at birds coming in they're not calling at the birds coming in once those birds land say if a new group of birds lands um once they land pardon my hands i don't look stupid but long story um once the birds land and they get on the ground and they're got their little spot then all of a sudden you'll hear them start piping up and they'll start arguing going back and forth with a new group of birds that just landed so as a hunter you got to think about that kind of stuff and Pay attention to that kind of stuff because when you go out with your buddies or whatever and you know, maybe you're new to it, maybe you don't quite understand goose language and you're watching this and you're like, man, I wish he could help me a little bit. I, I don't know why we're not getting those geese in there. We're just hammering on them and, you know, they should come right in. Well, that's probably the problem. You're hammering on them. Live geese on the ground do not make much noise to geese in the air. So... That's just the way it is. Here's another example here. A couple of geese flying over. Now, none of this is edit or nothing, so you just got to bear with me. But this is one of the ponds I hunt in Wisconsin. See them birds going out there? You don't hear these guys on the ground freaking out and making all this noise, do you? No. See, and a pair just landed right there. They're not making a bunch of noise, hollering, hooping, hollering, trying to get those other geese to come in. They're just being live geese. They're being natural geese. They're just hanging out. Now, if a coral were to start and they'd start going back and forth at each other, um, would that turn the geese and make them come in? Maybe, but that's just because you're sounding like live geese. So, I mean, there's a lot of things to keep in mind. Sorry, I keep flipping the camera back and forth, but there's a lot of things to keep in mind when you're hunting. You want to duplicate and sound like an actual Canada goose, a live Canada goose, and how they react to other birds coming in. Now, you all have heard the sounds and whatever of a large Canada goose, and here's the best way I can tell you. Hey, Kevin, what's going on, buddy? Um, Canada geese are not nice, right? They're pricks. I mean, they are, when they're on the ground, and they have their own food source, or they have their little roost, or whatever you want to call it. These things are jerks. I stumbled across this footage. It's on YouTube. It's not my footage. So I don't want any royalty complaints or copyrights coming at me. Um, but it's, you can find it on YouTube. I don't remember where I found it. But it's two geese fighting. I mean, this is serious, bare knuckles. 
they're fighting. They are mad at each other, and one of them's going to win or one of them's going to die because they are really fighting. So when you are hunting geese, you got to remember that too. You're trying to sound like the geese on the ground, quarreling back and forth with each other. And sometimes those geese get pissed. Sometimes they do make a lot of noise. But when you're thinking about all this, you got to correlate and watch your birds that you're hunting and see if those birds react to that. If they don't react to it, every day is different. Every day is different. You hunt new places. You have new weather, different birds, different pressured birds. Some might get hunted all the time. Some might only get hunted once a week. Every day you go out, you have to evaluate your birds, know what's going on. And a lot of that comes with scouting. If you're scouting them the day before, like some of that footage I was there, that was some of the stuff early or late in the season, that winter stuff. That was a field we were going to hunt. So I was scouting it, watching what the birds were doing. They were really relaxed. There must have been, a, we never ended up hunting the field, but there was a ton of corn in the field. I, I, evidently, they were relaxed. They weren't crazy aggressive with each other. When other geese flew over, they didn't care, man. There was like, well, there's enough food here. And there was, it was a big field. They had tons of room. So therefore, if you go to hunt that field, you've already got a jump start on those birds because you just watched them the day before. You know what they were acting like then. So maybe they'll act like that again today. So you just kind of, you get in your head, you turn into a goose. Um, that's what you guys want to be. And that's what I do when I'm hunting. It might sound dumb or whatever, but I turn myself into one dominant male goose. And when I'm calling, I represent that goose and I call like that goose in all sorts of different situations. And how I call or how I blow my call is going to depend on how I'm reading the birds or what I think the birds want to hear or what they do want to hear. So they can give, watch this. You guys got to watch this footage. This doesn't really have a lot to do with the price of eggs on a Tuesday, but man, they are fighting. I mean, that's brutal. That's like two pit bulls fighting. You hear all that noise that's going on? That's from those geese that are on the water. They're like, hey, what's up, man? Get off my buddy. Oh, man, you get off my buddy. No, I'm going to kick your butt. You're done. I mean, that's crazy fighting. He chases them all the way on shore, pushes them offshore. And look at him. That goose right there is stud. That's me when I'm hunting right there. Oh, you want some? Oh, you want some of this? Ah, oh, you don't want none of this. Yeah. Yeah. You want some of this? Ah. Oh. So anyway, what I'm getting at is Canada geese, pretty aggressive animals. They can be pretty mean. You guys have all seen the footage of them, like, attacking kids in park and parks and stuff. So they can be pretty aggressive amongst each other. Not just in the summertime, springtime, whatever, um, wintertime too. They do the same thing all the time. They're territorial no matter what. Now in the springtime or whatever, they might be a little bit more territorial if they're paired up or something. And that's when it seems like they attack the kids or whatever. But man, a goose is a goose. And I've told you that a million times before. So yeah, that's a goose from the hood. That's a mean sucker right there, boy. And, uh, you know, we've all probably, well, not all of us, but a lot of us have shot geese like that. And, like, I've had cripples before. I've had dogs go up to get in there and say, <sighs> hissing at them. Well, Bones just plows them over. But I've seen other dogs be like, whoa, what the heck? I mean, they're they're not nice creatures, bud. They, they're they mean, and they poop all over the place. So keep that in mind, too, when you're calling. Because sometimes you've got to get that aggressive to get birds to turn. Um, and like I've told you before, I this a little bit ago. I hope this phone's okay. Not really. It's fine. It's live video, right? If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Um, every place you hunt is going to be different, right? So if you hunt, say you hunt around a refuge, and you hunt the same pit all the time, um, you kind of have an idea what to do. You know it works. You know the birds. They're probably stale or they're new. 
So you already got a jump start compared to a lot of other people. Um, but mo- guys like me are, I don't know, I can't say guys like me, but what we do is we scout every day. We hunt different fields all the time. Every now and then we'll hunt a field twice here and there, but not often. And every day is different when we go into it. Like I told you, you have different weather. You have different wind. You have different birds you're hunting from different roost. Um, maybe those birds have been shot at by Joe Schmo down the road, past shooting them out of the fence row. Maybe those birds haven't been touched for two weeks. Maybe they're relaxed again, and they're pretty cool. They're probably going to come right in. Um, maybe some of those birds just got there overnight because there was a north wind last night. There's all these circumstances that could change and make or break your hunt so when you go into a hunt you just can't have a sequence or have something that works every time now things change all the time and that's how you guys that's why you guys need to learn how to read the birds and try to understand um what they want what they're okay with hearing and what's going to make them come in and not come in so, like I told you, most guys overcall. Um, even even myself, sometimes I used to overcall quite a bit, and I was young, and I could blow a call good, contest caller, right? So I thought I needed to call all the time. I pushed out more birds um, than most people would probably imagine because I just called too much. And then once you start learning and understanding the birds that you're hunting and watching the live birds, you realize that. Man, they don't, they're not even making that much noise. The birds that are making the noise are the ones flying, the ones coming in. So you got to keep that in mind when you're hunting. So I will, I'll do a couple examples here. I'll try to paint a picture in your head um, of what I think will help you try to read birds. No, this is a different segment. I'm not teaching you guys certain notes or nothing. It's, it's kind of a different deal, but I'm going to put my phone up here. Uh, 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 uh. hopefully i don't turn it off like i have before because that would suck i just pulled my i don't know what that thing was Mm -hmm. stable there so pull that rubber piece off i don't know what i did i don't know where that came from so okay i'm just trying to figure out how to explain this to you guys the best way possible um when you're hunting find a call here i can use when you're hunting geese it's okay let's take an example you're hunting the x you're hunting where those birds have been for a week you've scouted it uh, every day after school um you're the only one that's got permission there nobody's shooting them in between um they're not really getting a lot of pressure so you kind of got an idea what's going on you're on the x they're feeding there they've been coming there You scout them every afternoon or close to it. They're laying down in the field. They're comfortable. Um, It's going to be a good hunt, right? Well, when you and your buddies go out there with six layout blinds and 15 decoys, you go out there and only kill two. You're like, what the hell happened? I mean, there were so many birds in here. How did we kill more? Number one, they saw you. And number two, you probably blew them out of there. You screwed them up. And that situation like that, all you can do as a human is go in there and wreck it. Because they're coming there every day, no matter what. With you there, not there. Or with you, not there. So when you go there, you're just putting yourself in a situation where all you can do is screw them up. And I've looked at a lot of my hunts like that. I said, all right, guys, these birds are right here. We're on the X. All we can do is screw them up. So number one is your hide. You have to have the hide. It doesn't matter how good of a car you are, decoys you have, whatever. You have to hide. And that stuff we'll cover later on summer, through the fall, whatever. But hide's most important. Then, of course, good decoys, and then calling comes in, of course, and you want to sound like live birds. So here's a situation. If the birds are 200 yards out and you and your buddy see them, you, you want to sound like some geese on the ground. So here's an example of what you might do. Okay. They, they see your decoys, like, oh, there's our guys, let's go, and they're coming. They get about to that 100-yard mark where they're going to get to the point where they're going to start seeing your blinds, they're going to start picking stuff out. This is kind of the make-or-break area where a lot of guys um, quit calling, and the birds kind of lose attention, and they'll slide off, and they'll land 
outside of their decoy. So I'll land a different part of the field. From 100 yards to 50 yards, I think is usually where we're about the most aggressive on the call, or I'm the most aggressive on the call, just to reassure those birds in the air that, hey, those are those are live geese. So here's an example of what I do if birds were, even if they're coming um, and they're looking good, I would still, a quiet goose is a scared goose. When you pull up to a field and they all stick their heads up like this and they're quiet, they're scared, they're alert. So you got to be making some kind of noise to represent um, that you're a flock of birds, whether it's just a feeding growl. <laughs> you know, if you're good at that, do it. If you can just do a cluck, just give them a little bit of clucking. <laughs> you know, let them, su you got to sound like real birds on the ground. Um, now, I'm not saying every time you have to. There might be some times where you don't have to call it all. They're going to come either way. This depends on your birds and how smart your birds are. So once, and then, so you give them some noise. Sounds cool. Once you get to that 50-yard mark, um, I always, pretty much always, finish them single honks. <coughs> and once they get to a point where you know that they're going to, they're not seeing you and they're going to do it, at this point, all you're doing with this call is screwing them up. Your best option is to do a couple honks or something soft and subtle. Don't hit them hard. <laughs> if they're coming, soft. <laughs> and then once I know that they're going to do it in that last 10 to 5 seconds, I don't call. I'm reaching down, getting my gun, and I'm coming up. Now, there's different situations with different geese. With lessers, kind of talked about, those geese... They love you calling at them as hard and crazy as possible, and you'll call all the way till they hit the ground. And one of the other main reasons I don't call all the way, and sometimes I'll be quiet, is because we're hunting A-frames. So we're past the decoys to the side of them or whatever. When they get into that 50-yard mark, they can pinpoint those sounds. They can hear where those sounds are coming from. And if they're looking and they're like, well, the decoys ain't making any noise. The stuff's coming over there by that tree. That's not natural, right? So you got to be careful on how you're hunting and your style of hunting, too. If you're on layup lines, kind of the same thing. You can get away with a little bit more um, when you're in layup lines because you're actually in the decoys, but they can still pinpoint you, and they can look right down on you and see that hole where your head's at. So you got to be real careful on that. Now, if you're hunting a situation, here's something a little different. If you're hunting a situation where you're, you're kind of running traffic, but you're not, there's birds back and forth. There's a few birds in your field, but there's a lot of them flying around. So you're hoping if, if you can't kill the birds that are in your field, maybe you can call in some of the other ones. So your birds are 200 yard mark again. Make some noise. Sound like a bunch of geese on the ground, you know, fighting back and forth, quarreling. You're, remember, you're not really calling at those geese flying. You're just trying to sound real at that point, but you want them to hear you. So they think that you're real and they keep coming toward you or you pull them toward you. <laughs> so then if all of a sudden they turn and they're coming at you like oh all right, all right they like that so then then get real this is where the goose rhythm comes in handy to you know sound like a goose sound like two geese on the ground is clucking back and forth Okay, what happens all of a sudden? You're what this is about. This is when it comes down to reading birds. They're at that 60, 70 yard mark, and you're watching their wingtips, and they're not totally cupped up yet. They're interested, they're kind of doing a little cupping, flapping. And this is when all of a sudden you see them kind of peel off a little bit. This is when most guys quit calling. Because they think that their call may be messing them up. And that's not why they're coming in. I usually depend on the birds, reading the birds. I think the opposite. If I start seeing them birds waver a little bit and they're not quite sure, I'll hit them with something very goosey, very real, and a couple sharp notes. <laughs> Nah, 
most of the time those geese will go from this to mm, they'll turn back and they'll put their you know put their wings and they'll actually cup them up at that point so big difference you gotta know how to read birds um a lot of times when if the birds are skirting your decoys 70 80 yards you can actually watch their heads most of them geese they're all their heads are always moving they're looking down I've hunted them enough in the winds where they're just holding there in the wind and they're, they're literally doing this. They're looking at everything. They're picking everything out. They see everything. So it depends on the situation, how heavy the wind is. Watch their heads. Put yourself as that goose in the air and it's like, all right, well, he's got, he's got way too much time to see this. Um, he's hearing us, but he doesn't know where it's from. So we're okay. Or there's no wind. So he's pinpointing our sound. He's going to figure out something's wrong. All that stuff comes into play. So when you want to read geese and understand what they want to hear or what they'll deal with um, to come into your decoys, watch their heads, but mainly watch their wings and their wing tips. They start to flutter out. Most guys quit calling, and that's when you... <laughs> and then once they start coming at you again, Slow it back down, get it real. If you just you and your buddy going, rah, 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 slow it back down because, as you see in those videos I was showing you earlier, that last 50 yards, the geese on the ground really aren't going crazy and they're not making a lot of noise when those geese are coming in. The geese in the air are the ones that are noisy. So, a lot of guys watch birds and they don't understand that. Man, they're just going crazy making noise. Most of the time, it's the ones in the air that last 50 yards. Then once they hit the ground, they're there for a second, then they start fighting back and forth to make a ton of noise. So I think it's a misconception um, talking about guys calling at the geese. I mean, you are in a sense, but really as a live goose, they're not standing there just calling at them, like saying, hey, and this guy's calling at them. They're calling within each other. They're in their own groups. And when you hear them double clock and they're fighting with each other, and whatever. So you got to keep that in mind. Um, another situation, I don't know what you call it, but another situation, um, and there's, like I told, there's so many situations, circumstances, things are going to change hunts. And if you guys have questions about certain hunts you guys do, or certain areas you hunt, or a certain day you hunted, you remember, man, let us know. Um, check us out on Wednesdays at our, our eight o'clock live session and ask us those questions, like paint a picture in our head and my head or Brennan's and we'll try to help you maybe it's hard to help if we don't know the situation exactly what's going on guys are like would you call more or less I'm like I don't know did the birds like it when you called more or did they not like it so you really got to figure out how to read birds here's a situation and you've seen it in some of our uh our YouTube videos birds are way out there you're running traffic you're not anywhere they want to be you can't get in there when those birds are out there you're making noise when they're out there three four hundred yards you and your buddies doesn't really matter how good and goosey you sound at that point. You're just trying to make noise. Okay. Those birds are going to hear that high pitch. They're going to hear that break, those sharp notes. They're not going to hear this. So doing all that soft crap when the birds are way out there, you're wasting your time, man. You might sound cool on stage or in your garage, but those birds can't hear you. So you're not doing any good to get their heads to turn toward you to think that you're live geese. When they're out there, crank on them. <laughs> and then if they start coming toward you, again, that's when everything changes. They get, you know, they're a couple hundred yards. You're still pretty aggressive. <laughs> Remember, you're running traffic. These birds aren't coming there. You're, you're trying to get them convinced that you're real geese and they should come and hang out there. They're at the 100-yard mark again. With traffic birds, sometimes you have to stay on them and stay more aggressive. So not always, but pretty much. So you watch the birds, watch their wingtips. And if, if you are sitting there doing that and all of a sudden he just cups up, you want to keep doing that until – almost until you're ready to call the shot. Depends on your hide and everything else too. So here's an example of running traffic and how I would stay pretty aggressive to finish the birds. But you can watch some of our YouTube videos when we're running traffic. Well, we'll call pretty aggressive to get them come all the way in. But there's some days, like if we're hunting the A-frames, um, that last 10 seconds, quit calling. 
let them finish into the decoys. We use all Dakota fully flock decoys. So we use a really nice decoy, something that looks real. But if we were to keep calling, especially if there's no wind, and we're in the A-frames 50 yards behind our decoys, it doesn't sound real. Like, the sound's coming from back here, but I'm landing here like, what? what's going on? So if you're hunting smart geese, it's not going to work. But on the one Nebraska hunt, we're hunting a pit. We're in the middle of a thousand decoys. We can make all the noise we want because we're in the in the decoys and we're super hidden because we have everything covered. So it all depends on your situation. So make sure to go watch. That's a perfect example. Those two Nebraska hunts I just did this year. One's in the pit. We called very aggressive a lot. Um, the other one in a bean field, we're on traffic and we call a lot when they're out there, but when they finished, we laid off and let them come into the decoys. So that's usually how I finish geese most of the time. So tomorrow, Brandon's going to be here. We're going to go over team calling because a situation like that, I got a guy next to me going. <laughs> He's sounding like real geese on the ground. You're the power caller. You're the main one controlling the geese and what they're doing. But you having other guys with you, man, it's such a benefit, such a help. And uh, having them do natural sounds, growly sounds, why, why I or you, you're doing that and he's just cupped up, stay on him. Now, for some reason, all of a sudden, he kind of goes, eh, pulls off. A lot of guys think, oh, crap, not calling too much. I lost him. If that point, you either, you already lost him if you quit calling. Maybe speed it up. Try to get him to mm, turn that last 20 yards. <laughs> and sometimes they'll just mm, and come right in. So you really have to watch the birds. This is all about watching the birds. Um, know your birds in your area. Scout, scout, scout. Hide is everything. But when you're calling, you want to sound like live geese on the ground. You're, you're trying to sound like these geese that are quarreling back and forth on the ground. You're not necessarily calling it the geese flying. Watch some of that footage. Go watch geese on your own. You'll see what they do. Don't just watch what people say. Watch the live birds. You're going to learn way more from watching live geese in a situation, scouting, hunting, whatever, than you'll ever learn from a guy like me or somebody talking on YouTube. That's just the way it is. So I'm going to turn the phone around quick, see if there's any questions. Well, I think I am. Let's see if I can do this without wrecking everything. Yep. Um, whoa! What's up with the pause? Oh, you know. Something stupid. No, I'm not going to shoot. Uh, let's see. Uh, does it really take four to six weeks? Uh, Jesse, it depends on what call you ordered. But yes, it's, I say four weeks, no matter what. Um, that's just the way, it's just the way it bees right now. Um, I just got some new O-ring inserts for some of the next gen stuff. So everything's not out four weeks right now. Uh, I think I'm up to like two and a half weeks on most of them. Just depends on what you order. If I have the parts in stock, um, really just depends usually during this time of year i it's still a couple weeks though because everything has its rollover so first come first serve so you got other people lying in front of you so depends though which college you order um yeah tenderizing the yeah that's right i was rocky i was hit those hitting those cows hanging down getting them getting them loosened up you know rocky huh all right guys um time is it today was short uh, hopefully you guys can understand a little bit what I was talking about. Maybe pick up something. Um, this would be a good time for you guys to ask questions about certain hunts with me. And I know a lot of you guys aren't on here, probably still working, whatever. Um, but email us or, or actually better. You're going to have a hard time getting a response from me on email. So join in our live sessions on Wednesdays at eight o'clock central time every Wednesday. And that's just when you start asking random questions. If you got questions about, Say, well, Big Sean, I hunt this pond in September. Here's the roost is, you know, they're they're coming out of the south. Usually we have a south wind. 
Um, we're hunting in the pits. We're hitting good, blah, blah, blah. What would you do in this situation or any tips? And that way I can maybe offer you guys a little bit of my knowledge I've had over the last few years and try to help you. It'll be hard because I'm not actually there um, to see what the birds are doing, uh, how they're acting, reacting to the call, reacting to the decoys, reacting to the flag. But the main point of this is watch the birds. Watch the live birds. Watch what they're doing and try to duplicate that. Um, they're not, you know, when birds are that 50, 60 yard mark, the birds on the ground usually aren't hammering and just going crazy. It's not the way it usually works. I'm not saying it wouldn't work. It depends on your birds. Are they dumb? They just get there. Maybe they want to hear a lot of noise. So sometimes you get them that. It's very complicated. Everybody's like, Big Sean, why are you so successful? You know, I hunt all the time. We don't get all the birds. Number one, I've been doing it for over 25 years. Uh, number two, it's because I learn from the birds and I understand that I still make mistakes. And there's some days I go out hunting and I'm like, oh man, that's not going to work. And it usually doesn't work. Sometimes it does, but you have to learn every time you hunt, you have to read your birds. And that's what I've learned over the years is watching the live birds, honkers. We're talking about honkers right now. Watch what they're doing. When you're scouting, I've told guys this a million times. Don't just drive up in your car and look out. Oh, yeah, they're in our field again. Cool, man. Let's go have some beers. Drive back to the house and have beers. Get drunk with your buddies. Show up late. Um, watch the birds. You know, don't sit right there at the road. Don't make them anxious or, you know, nervous. Pull up to an approach or something. Watch them with your binoculars. See what they're doing when the other birds are coming into them. Find their exact X. See where you can hide. Is there a good hide right there? Is there not good hide there? When you scout, you can plan, get a whole game plan in your head for the next morning. So when you're out there in the dark, you're not looking like a fool trying to, well, I think maybe we should hunt a hide over here. Well, no, I was out here last night. There's a grass down here in a slow spot. We can really hide good. And the birds are only about 30 yards off that and the way the wind is. So long story, but you, you see what I'm saying? Know your birds, scout your birds, watch your birds. That's going to give you way bigger advantage when you go to actually hunt those birds the next day or two days later whatever it is so read the birds the birds teach you everything i'm gonna get off here this will be on youtube of course like everything else hope everybody has a fantastic what is it thursday yeah it's thursday and it's warm now and it's gonna snow again pretty cool man but that's just the way it is uh you're on facebook now youtube school of waterfowl big sean the big white guy uh, if you do snap chisel, big E822. Uh, I hope everybody has a good night. Oop, can't show you that. Prototype. Oop, can't show you that. Oop, oop, can't show you that. All right, guys. Can't show you too much. Got a lot of secret stuff down here in this basement. Peace out. Piece of chicken grease. Man, that light is bright. All right. Peace out. Bye.